Thank you very much. I, I think partly because I uh, have some trouble with uh, hearing and an ear infection, I had trouble uh, hearing uh, some of the fine remarks of the, of the past uh, few days. Um, but I, so I'll try to speak up. Um, I thank you very much for asking me, Gary, and it's always an honor and a privilege to be with such a distinguished group of uh, academics from around the world. And uh, I know that in American tradition it sometimes doesn't happen, but I think we should all give Gary a very large hand for his marvelous. So I have to accept that I'm somewhat senior in these matters, and that's the tradition in Europe for thanks to be given in that way. Um, I, 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 I'm pleased that uh, you all are here this morning and awake, and uh, even with the thin ranks. What originally I had thought to do was to give an overview of some aspects of police research and studies in uh, this country. And then I was asked uh, to include uh, some background material on uh, the UK or to, to treat of those equally. And I have to say that as I was making my notes prior to uh, any writing, I, I found that uh, it was impossible to discuss most of uh, these traditions and trends without, in fact, moving back and forth uh, and, in some sense, maintaining a comparative uh, a perspective on, 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 the, on the matters. Um, a second uh, a general point before I uh, make my, make my uh, uh, present presentation is that we should note uh, the absence of uh, female researchers over the period of this, uh, of the development of police studies, as we might call it, um, policing studies over the 30 years. There are really a handful of people, such as Betsy Stanko, Frances uh, Heidenson, Mary Morash, Robin, who's left, and uh, Susan Martin, who made some major contributions, and I wasn't able to weave those into the, in the short time. Secondly, the, the tremendous in, uh, dominance of, of, of male uh, studies, and as I think Clifford said, male in the field, uh, the focus on violence as a central question of the, of the uh, police, which traced back to Wesley and has, an, has continued to be the thematic, which I think is quite striking. And it, uh, again, consistent with the dominance of the area by uh, male scholars. But what I'd like to do briefly is, is uh, talk about, briefly about the reviews that have been done that have set uh, the stage for much of what's talked about, um, the central Socio-cultural and legal differences of the U.S. and U.K., um, some of which are overplayed or overdone. I'd like to talk a little about some anomalies in the research that continue um, tensions and anomalies in the research process that are based in part. Oh, there's Robin. I'm sorry. She moved place. She's the only person who moved place. I'm sorry. I thought you were gone. All right. I'm sorry. I wanted to make the point that research by uh, by women about issues of ethnicity and gender have uh, been a, a, an important but small part uh, of the dialogue that's gone forward. Um, I then would like to talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the future of police studies. And one of the difficulties there uh, is, I would like to uh, touch on, is uh, the way in which American uh, notions of the police and the occupational culture and policing have influenced, perhaps, uh, uh, in a negative fashion, the um, need to broaden the questions we're asking. Therefore, I will uh, briefly comment on uh, definition of policing and democratic policing uh, and uh, throw that open in hopes of continued discussion of the matter. Um, I found uh, some very interesting uh, in the book of mine that's coming out next month, I went through the uh, review of the definition of policing and found that uh, the absent one or two stabs, uh, there were very few attempts, and primarily it's used simply as an obvious ex post facto uh, 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 notion. So I want to take that up. <clears throat> First of all, when I began to look at this, being a scholar, I looked at the reviews of the literature. 
and there's an enormous number of reviews of the literature stretching back to the early 70s. Um, and the Oxford Handbook of Criminology has been kind of a consummation of some of those things. Uh, one of the uh, things that runs through these many reviews, and I do have a paper, and I'd be happy to send it by email to anyone who would like it, like it and my email address is the hotmail address that's, uh, noted. Um, the, the overviews are interesting because by and large, and I'll come back to this, by and large they are organized around substantive or problem areas rather than theoretical frameworks or questions. And even when they mention the problem that this is a highly uh, ex post facto sensitive to public issues kind of uh, research, they nevertheless end up with a laundry list of uh, here are the problems, such as community policing, whatever that means. And I mean that literally. Um, now, as pointed out already by Gary, the few figures have had an enormous influence on, and a few books have had an enormous influence on what we take to be our problems, or what we take to be uh, the problems uh, that are enduring. And I don't need to go over the litany, uh, the canonical listing, uh, but I would say that, uh, because all of those are well known to you. But however, one of the most interesting things to me was to note uh, the, the lack of things coming after 1985. The very few uh, important, uh, notable, landmark sort of works have come out. And I, I apologize in part for my own location and cohort effect. But nevertheless, uh, it's we're citing and talking about ideas that were written out and thought about by some of us in this room 30 more or plus years ago and are now reiterated as if they had some empirical validity. Most of them were dubious in the first <coughs> place, so uh, we should be very suspicious about the repetition of this litany. But there are two books that are, are quite striking that I've come to later and I know that some of us have shared this late introduction. One is Clocker's theory of policing, a kind of an unfinished work, a magnum opus, where I think he suddenly just pulled up his pen and stopped, um, which is a fascinating attempt to look at, at, at policing, democratic policing, essentially uh, Anglo-American. And the Sykes and Brent's observational study in 1983, which went totally without uh, notice and was the first attempt to systematically record uh, observations of behavior of between citizens and the public. Oh, rarely cited, but the first innovative, and they had compute, laptop computers that were as big as the suitcases that they were sitting on their laps. Uh, now one can literally do it on a handheld device. But they've been very, very influential. I also want to mention about the figures that the Anglo-American influence of, of the of Canadian scholars, um, Margaret Baird, Janet Chan, Richard Erickson, Chris Murphy, Clifford Shearing, and Stenning have been very important, even though they, and they move back and forth as the rest of, the, of, of, of us have. A third little point about, uh, by way of beginning, is that almost all of the people involved here, I would say, in two, two kind of interesting uh, uh, interconnections of networks. First of all, the, the small number of people knew each other fairly well. Uh, one way or another through the 70s, partly because LEAA was sponsoring trips and conferences. Um, the, uh, the funding came very commonly from similar sources, and I'll come back to that. Uh, also, something I mentioned later on in the paper, but I'll, I'll introduce it now just for, for your edification, that there's a kind of, uh, if I may, circulation of elites a great many people moved from the home office to academic studies, particularly after the death of the polys and the rise of the polys as universities. Um, many of us 